everyone, it's Kat. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is three tips on how to do small talk. As a new business owner, I realized how important and vital it is for me to go out there and meet new people because when you grow your community, you can learn from others, you can share your experiences, you can help each other out. It's just so important because you can't build a business on your own. I feel like when you go to networking events and do small talk, things like that, like it can be awkward and it can be awkward enough that you don't want to do it at all and just hide at home. But I realized that you got to push yourself, put yourself in these new situations where you don't really know what the outcome is going to be. But I feel like my success metric for, you know, whether a networking event was worth my time or was successful or not um, is whether I made a connection with someone, like a genuine connection. And I feel like the connection doesn't have to have like an immediate tangible result like you know, there doesn't need to be a job offer or like a new client or anything like that. It's just someone that you feel like you connected with on a topic and you just had a great time chatting with them and you want to keep in touch for the future. For someone like me who is naturally more introverted and shy, I feel like I've come up with ways to make the networking process a little less painful and actually I'm learning to enjoy it um, because of the people that I meet. So I just wanted to share these tips with you to hopefully um, help you as well. Okay, so all these tips assume that you found someone that you're already talking to. And I usually just go off of my gut. So I'll walk into a room and then I'll just scan the room if someone looks like friendly and I get this um, and I get this feeling that I want to talk to them, then I'll just go for it. So there's not a lot of pre-planning ahead of time. Okay, so once you've already met someone, said your hellos, my first tip is to ask them something related to the present time or present location. So for example, if you're at an event and it's hosted by a person, you can say like, oh, how did you meet this person? And then you can kind of swap stories of how, how you know this person or if an organization organized an event, you can be like, oh, are you part of this organization for how long? How involved are you and stuff like that. So these question, this question can kind of lead to a stream of other questions. In terms of timeliness, like, you know, if it's in the summertime, you can say like, oh, did you just come back from vacation or are you going anywhere? Or if there's a holiday or a weekend coming up, you can be like, oh, do you have any plans for the weekend? Or even like, oh, do you have any plans for later in the day? Or, sorry, the reverse is like, oh, uh, if the event is in the evening, you can be like, oh, how was work today? Or what did you do earlier today? This, I feel like I learned from observing other people. They would ask me about the present time, like what happened before the event and what will happen in the future. So yeah, I've learned that from other people. The second tip is to ask them about their story. And well, you don't want to use those exact words, but you know, find out like, what do they do? Uh, where are they from? And where did they live? To help you get a mental image of this person's journey, <laughs> I guess. Um, and that also is just lots of fodder for more questions. One thing you can do is if they've made like decisions, like they had to have made decisions along their, their journey in life. So, you know, if they moved from one city to another, you can be like, oh, so what made you decide to move here? Or if they switch jobs, this is something that a lot of people ask me like, oh, how did you decide to become an entrepreneur? Or, and how did you decide to leave Google? So there's all these questions that you can ask them related to how they made their decision. I feel like that is a great open-ended question because usually it's not a yes or no, like one word answer. Usually I have to describe like, a story or the context or they have to explain their thinking and so then that um, gives you more opportunity to connect you can be like oh I felt that way too and whatever so yeah life story tons of opportunities to ask questions and I feel like it's just something that's generally interesting about people um, the third tip is to ask them something that you're genuinely curious about so it could be related to your interests. For example, I love going to restaurants and trying new things in the Bay Area. And so I love to ask people, what are your favorite restaurants? And so like if they give me a new restaurant, like I can be like, oh, like that's really useful. I can like bookmark it and um, try that out later. It's something where I'm genuinely interested in the answer. And I feel like 
the answer will be valuable to me. And I think people will be able to tell if you're gen if you're actually interested in their answer and listening <laughs> because if you ask them questions that you don't really care about like you're just gonna zone out and you're not gonna know what to ask next <laughs> I think everyone loves to be helpful to others so you're just giving that opportunity to them to be helpful lastly my bonus tip is to share something about yourself because you don't want it to just be like an interview where you're just like firing away different questions and they're just answering. Um, so if they say something that triggers like a memory or a related feeling in your head, then you can go ahead and share that story even if they didn't prompt you. Because I think in the past, like I would wait for them to ask me the question or something. Like I just didn't want to like say it and feel like they would just be like, why are you saying this? But people don't think that. Like when you offer up a story or share like, oh, like this one time I also went to that, ex had that experience or I also went to that restaurant, people are like, oh, and then they like have the opportunity to get to know you better and also chime in with their own questions. So yeah, don't be afraid to share things about yourself even if they didn't ask. My tips. Um, Those are my tips for what I've learned about how to do networking so far. I'm by no means an expert. I'm very much a newbie at this, but I hope that these tips were helpful to you. If you have your own tips, definitely leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.